I've been presented with a unique problem. I have a friend who has an RV, and it's from the 1980s. Its mirror has broken off. This is the mirror mount. He has one side that's good, one side that's bad, but this part is no longer sold. So what do you do when you can't find a part and they don't sell them? Well, this is where we introduce the Einstar Vega. Full disclosure, Einstar sent this to me to test out and do this video. This Einstar is a 3D scanner, and what do you do with a 3D scanner? You scan an old part that will give you a new part. Here's a look at what comes with the Einstar Vega. We have a 65 watt power supply, a USB power wire. We have a really cool tripod. It doesn't come across on video, but this thing is a stout metal tripod. And here's the Einstar Vega itself. It is a solid piece, almost feels like a thick tablet. You can put the tripod in the bottom. We have a USB charger on the side for this USB power. And then we have a uh, two fans on the bottom. This is the camera and LED sensors on the front. And then this is the screen. And on the side, we have two buttons, one of which is the power button. Outside, it comes with and pre-installed this rubber casing to make sure that this product doesn't get harmed when dropped. There's a few other items that come inside the box. We have these small reflective dots and these big reflective dots. This helps the camera track when it's doing something tracking. We have a quick start guide on what all the buttons do. We have this little clip that I've never used. I don't know what it's for. And on the bigger pad inside, we have a big plastic piece, this felt case, and then a pan clip. Inside this felt case is a really important part. This is the calibration board. You'll notice that they look very similar, these dots to the dots that you put to track. We have small ones on the back, big ones on the front. Here's the first boot. It does take a bit to boot up. And here we're going into the loading screen. It has two modes, uh, HD and quick. HD is for small stuff, quick or fast is for big stuff. So switching between the two takes a bit. Here is the control center. It's a lot like an iPhone. You swipe down and you can get to the control center. So we have settings. We have an account. You log in with your account. We have a software update. Updates via Wi-Fi. It can connect to your Wi-Fi here. You can hotspot this. You have different languages, the display brightness, and you have dark and light th themes. This is really nice when you're outside. We have the date and time. We have storage. This comes with a 512 gigabytes of storage. You can store a lot of files on this. The very first thing you need to do, and you can see every seven days, we need to recalibrate. Mine hasn't been calibrated. So it will walk you through exactly what to do, which is really nice. Clean the front. This is where we're gonna use that calibration board. Never lose this calibration board. I don't know what would happen if you couldn't. We have lights on the front, so it'll pick up, and here you can see the scanning. Isn't it interesting that those calibration lights, or the stickers calibration, it looks like they light up in the dark as they're reflective. So you can see on the left, it shows you exactly how you need to hold the calibration board. And in the center, you can see, I'm just raising and lowering this where it's kind of like a mobile game. Um, you have to get the blue circle away. Now, what was that plastic piece for? You can see we have to hold it at an angle. So this holds it at an angle. We're gonna hold this straight up, but this will hold it as an angle to get angled pieces because when, you get, uh, when you're scanning, everything is angular. So again, we're just going through the dot mode, getting rid of the blue, and you can see the super nice animation on the right side. This could not be any easier. I have the older Einstar um, handheld scanner that has to be plugged in, and it is a lot more uh, cumbersome when you're doing the uh, alignment. So I fast forwarded through that alignment because it's pretty boring, but once you're finished with the alignment on the small side, you flip it over and do the big side. So the small side, we were doing the HD and now we're doing the fast mode and we're doing the exact same thing. I had to put it on the floor because you have to be pretty far away for this one. So we're now doing the big side 
and we're doing the exact same thing. You can see we're at fast mode on the top here now, and we're gonna do the exact same thing to a line. So you have to do this upon very first boot up. It wants you to do this every seven days. Um, the more you do it, the better scan you'll get. After you're done, you'll click save. It's gonna generate calibration results. It's gonna apply this to the scanner and we'll be ready to scan our first item. It takes a minute to apply. The nice thing about this Einstar Vega is that you do not have to plug it into a computer. The original one I had had to plug in and you're tethered. This one you can go anywhere at any time. The only thing is we don't have a replaceable battery so we need a charge on the fly. You can see it does take a bit of time to apply that calibration. Once it's done, we'll be good to go. All right, we are in HD mode. That's the up close, and you can kind of see how I'm scanning here. The problem is I need to scan all sides of it. I can't scan it on a flat surface. So I'm going to take some string. I'm going to hang it from the ceiling, and that way I can scan all the way around it and get a whole 360 view. It's even more than that because you're doing all kinds of uh, rotations. But I'm going to let this hang uh, to where it doesn't move, and then I'll be able to scan. So on the left side, we have the brightness and darkness. We have uh, how far away and how close we can scan. So you can set those on the scanner. And then we have, do you want to scan a base or do you need no base? We're not doing a base because we don't want a base on this. So we're switching to HD because we were in fast mode. HD is the up close small stuff. And now we're going to go ahead and start scanning. Here we are, we're gonna start scanning. We get up close so we can see those dots. And once it does, you can see it's picked up the start scan. And now we just slowly move around. You can see on the right side, the, the uh, up close and too far, that little green bar over there by the pause button, we were too far. So you gotta keep it within a certain distance for it to pick up. You gotta adjust the lights so we can see it. You can see the red and black picture in the background up in the upper left. And we're just going to start going around and scanning the piece in 360 view. The nice thing about this is when it loses scanning, you can see it's a scanning lost. You just move it back to some known location and it will re-pick it up and start scanning again. The benefits of this thing is that we, are, again, are not tethered to anything. So we can go outside, inside, take it over a friend's house. We're not tethered to a computer, and it's a self-sufficient unit all in one. It's really lightweight, and the battery lasts a really long time. So here you can see I'm scanning from all eight axes. I can go from the top, the bottom, all left and right. So holding it consistent is what really matters here. Another nice feature is that we can hit this pause button on the side and it will pause the scan, keep the data points we have. We can look at what we've scanned and what we've missed. So when we hit play and we regain tracking, if some place it knew where it was, you can see it's picking tracking up right back where we stopped. And as long as the item isn't a moving item, like a human or something like that, it's a very simple thing to pick up where we left off and know where we uh, didn't complete the last scan. And once we're finished, we get this really nice points view. You can see it scanned and picked up really well. And when we hit the mesh, it'll show the mesh view. We have scan, um, zoom in, pan, all the things with one finger and two finger uh, on the screen to adjust. We can cut out the pieces we don't want with our fingers, swipe. We can select through. You can see the pink. I could have cut that out. And then we have a share button. If we scan that with our phone, we can share this and somebody else could see that. We have the cloud on here, so I've uploaded other things to the cloud. Once we're finished, we just rename our project. I'm gonna rename this RV clip. We'll hit save, and there we go. We can delete, rename, cancel. We can go back into the project and start cutting the mesh as well. So from here, I'm going to go back to my computer and I'm going to bring up the cloud on my computer because I want to 3D print this part, make sure this part is correct. We get a better view on the computer. It's a bigger screen, of course. We can view it in every way possible. 
we have a bunch of share settings and we have a bunch of formats we can save. Um, the OBJ and the STL, I use the STL the most. Of course, I have a Bamboo 3D printer and I'm gonna test this part on a Bamboo printer. So when we download the STL, really simple, we just load this into Bamboo. We um, orient it the way we need to. We slice it and we print it. And that's what I did right here. All right, the print just got done. And then we're gonna pull it out, take a look, and see how well the scan did in comparison to the actual item. I did have to put some supports on that one piece, but so far it's looking really good. So there's our broken one, there's the one we scanned, and there is the 3D printed part. While not 100% flawless, it is absolutely gonna do what we needed to do. Now I have not brought this file into any software to touch it up. So if we needed to bring it into Mesh Mixer or Fusion 360 to clean up the file to make it even more uh, perfect, we can absolutely do that. Super simple, it's just an STL file. All right, well, the part is finished and now we're gonna try fast mode because we did small, what can we do fast? So to show you that, we're gonna scan my son. Now, granted, he chose a pose that is super hard to hold, especially for an eight-year-old. So we're switching from HD to fast. We're in fast mode. We can be much farther away. You can see we're gonna pick up color in this scan, which is pretty awesome. You can see I'm selecting lighter or darker on the left side, change the camera brightness, and we're gonna go ahead and hit uh, play and start scanning. So here's the scan of him trying to hold this pose, which is very hard, but an adult, you're gonna get a really good scan. This thing works honestly a little better in fast mode than it does HD um, on something far away. It seems to, seems to capture data easier. Not saying it doesn't capture better data because they both capture really good data, but capturing the subject when it's bigger is I think just for any 3D scanner is easier because it has more surfaces to reference off of. So here we did the bottom half of a human first, and then we tried to do the top head last and only once so we don't get some ghosting. And the hands come out really hard because he could not hold his hands. But we finished. Now it's pausing, and here is what the scan looks like. We have color on this 3D scan, which is even easier. And when you zoom in, you see all the points that it took. So we do have a little ghosting in the hands and a little ghosting in the head. That's because he moved and I scanned it twice and it tried to put those over top each other. So not wonderful. But when we hit done, it optimizes. It'll look even better. We can do one click processing. We can do fast or HD mode. We're choosing fast. This is not a fast process. This took about three to five minutes to generate the mesh and then optimize the mesh. So this part will take a bit of time. You can see we generated first, and now we're doing texture mapping um, to generate the entire model. All right, I sped this part up because you don't want to wait five minutes to watch if, how this does it, but it kind of has that Siri glow on an Apple when you activate Siri. Uh, it's got that glow, but once it's finished, we get 100%, and now we have a really, really nice premium model of my son. Now, of course, you see the hands and the head kind of have a little ghosting, but for this purpose of the video, it doesn't really matter. We're gonna go ahead and 3D print them out. And when you 3D print it really small, you're not gonna be able to see it. One problem is there's some holes we missed. So it has a hole parameter. You can see it's going from red to green of any holes that are on there. So I basically go as high as I can until everything is green, hit apply, and it will seal up the holes for watertight models. And that's what you want. I don't want any holes when I'm 3D printing this. So it'll fill the hole. These holes are filled and we have to map it once again after the holes are filled. This takes another long amount of time. So we'll skip through that. Here he is. He's finished. We're going to complete the model. We're going to upload that model to the uh, online area by hitting the bottom right. These are all the models. There he is. We're gonna 
load into any model at any time once you have models on the device. So I can go back to models that I've done months and years ago and re-edit those if I needed to. I'm gonna rename him Deacon. And this is the Deacon, oh, spelled it wrong. Deacon finger, fingers up high. I'm gonna upload to my uh, cloud that came free with the Vega. You have five gigabytes of cloud space. So it won't hold the whole 512 that you have on the Einstar, but it will hold a whole lot of models. So I'm gonna pull him up. I'm gonna do the exact same thing that I did with the RV bracket. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, load his file here. I'm gonna download it after I take a look how everything comes out. So looking really good. And let's go ahead and down, download his file and then move it into Bamboo and then print them out. Export his SDL, load them into Bamboo. He comes in humongous, so I gotta resize him down to about, oh, I missed him. I resize him too small, and adjust him a little bit, get him the right height, slice him correctly, print him out with some tree supports. And I printed him pretty small for this video so it could be finished. And this was printed on the X1 Carbon. So we take a look. 36 minutes to print him out. We'll pop him out, take off the tree supports, and let's see how he compares to the real life person. So here he is the next day, and here is the little printout. So you can see, you can tell who this is. It looks pretty good at the small scale. If you're bigger, you want to bring that in a mesh mixer and edit it. So that's it. Hopefully this shows you how a 3D scanner, especially the Einstar Vega, can help you create a product that you cannot purchase and solve real life problems. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. We'll see you on the next one.